Hello everyone, welcome to a, another episode of the Let's Make a Game series. Uh, I've been away for a bit, but I'm back now, so let's uh, jump right back in. So we left off last time, uh, I'll just run it real quick so we can see what we're working with. Um, so we've got this, uh, I think, oh no, he's gone too far down, oh there he was, yeah. Uh, so we can move it up, there's constant gravity coming down, uh, I can hold up to apply an upward force as soon as I let go gravity takes over you see the easing and then we have left and right movement uh, fairly fast so I think the point of today I'm gonna keep it somewhat short compared to some of the previous videos previous videos will run a little bit past an hour I think I'm gonna try to keep it to about half an hour per video from now on um, so the point of today what I want to, us to uh, to accomplish by the end of the video is to have the flapper actually behave like the bird from Flappy Bird um, so he has a fixed X position, which is right in the middle of the screen. Um, he is constantly affected by gravity, which is pulling him down. Um, as that's happening, he's rotating the tip of the of the nose, in this case, the tip of the plane, down. And then with the press push of a button, you apply a, a, a big upward force and you set the rotation back um, to some value. Uh, and and that, that's basically all we want to do today. And it should be pretty straightforward because of the way we've set everything up here. Uh, so, if we look at Flapper uh, right now, so all he is is, and I think I just mentioned last time we wanted to make Flapper a sprite, um, so that you don't do this because really the Flapper should be a sprite that has a rigid body, um, or yeah, that or we make another class that is a sprite that has a rigid body and we pull from that class. But I don't think that's getting a little too. I, I think that, I don't think that's really necessary. Um, in this case, we can. Um, we can hear it from a sprite, but anyways, I'm not going to bother with that. Today, we just want the flapper to behave like the flapper should um, behave, given that this is a um, Flappy Bird style game. So let's go to, oops, let's go to the, let's go here. There we go. So here is where we've got basically all of our input code. Um, I don't like the fact that it's here in the main. Um, so that what I want to do is create an input manager that can handle all of our input for us so that we clean this up a bit. All of this really should be handled by some class that's supposed to manage that. So um, let's put it um, in here, Flappy Twi uh Let's put it, yeah, it's not really an engine level thing. I mean, it will, it should be, but uh, let's see, the way we've done this is we we have the we have the I/O mouse and keyboard so um, I think that's fine for the engine so that we can put the our input manager in here so the input manager can be a, a on the game side as opposed to the engine side um, so we'll create uh, we'll call it input manager uh, cpp and a dot h okay and again do our switch uh, input manager. Um, if. There we go. Um, so input manager. So the way we do, uh, if we go back to Twitch, the way we have the mouse and, um, well, I guess we're not using. Um, <clears throat> oh no, we are using keyboard down here. So because these classes are basically all fully static, um, we don't have to have an instance of the classes, which makes this input manager code really easy. Um, so we all we really care about here, oh, what's, uh, what's complaining about? Oh, whoops. Oh yeah, sorry. If and death. There we go. Um, Okay, so uh, input manager. Um, then we'll probably want something like um, handle input. Or well, let's call it update. Um, and then the input manager is going to have to know about our flapper. Notice here, like we we know about our player. Um, in this case, we'll have to maybe pass in, let's say, a, a reference or a pointer to this guy um, into the input manager so that it can modify this directly um, in here. 
So what we'll do is, uh, this is flapper, so we'll do, take this guy, um, I should just do, flapper, let's make it a pointer, or flapper, uh, when we instantiate this, let's pass in flapper pointer. And then we'll have our update, and our update should have uh, delta time passed in because we've got we've got that. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, okay. So that's that's part of the engine, and then we have a uh, yeah get dt. Okay, great. Um, so we should be able to um, do it. Yep, that's fine. Okay, good. Um, so when we go back here, so we'll have that. We don't need that. Uh, we will need um, eventually. Actually, we'll need <clears throat> and the engine. So the engine has that uh, get dt method is static. So we only need to know about this class, and then we can just call that method directly. So let's make sure we know about that class. Um, oops. Engine engine. Um, okay, and then in our update is where we'll check for everything, and then in here we'll be modifying Flapper. That way we can take the code outside of the main. So let's go in here. Uh, manager, input manager, we take a Flapper pointer. Uh, and we'll do that. And then in here is where we'll want to check for our input. So right now we do that in main and while true. So basically I'm going to replace, I guess we can get rid of that. I'm going to replace all of this for now. <clears throat> and I'll add a new update here. So let's put that in here. Um, yeah, right, this guy needs to know about mouse and keyboard. Uh, engine, IO, mouse. Engine IO keyboard. Okay. Oh no. Um, there we go. So okay, great. We know about mouse. We know about keyboard. Uh, where did I go? There we go. Good. And now it's not called player. It's called flapper, which I think makes more sense. At least in this in the in the scope of input manager. Because um, it doesn't care if it's a player or, let's say, if it was an AI. All it cares about is the fact that we're modifying a flapper. Um, and right, we're a pointer, so let's just do this. Uh, flapper stop, flapper pointer. Cool. So everything's happy. Um, all we need now is on the Twitch side, uh, the Twitch.cpp side, to create an instance of our... Flappy Twitch uh, input manager, and that should be here. So we can create an instance of our input manager. It has to be after we create a flapper. And then we'll go input manager, uh, input manager, and we'll pass in uh, good. And then we can do I am updates. And so so now everything should still work the same way. Uh, so let's try it and make sure that it does. And it does. As you can see, everything works the same way. Um, but now the code is outside of the main function and into a, its own class, which is um, just a little cleaner, right? So now every time we want to make changes to the way our input works, we just go to Input Manager and make the changes here directly. Um, so uh, what we actually wanted, so we don't actually want any of this rotation stuff. This was just us trying stuff out. Um, we don't want any of this, actually. All we really want to do, and we'll have to add logic to the flapper um, for it to automatically rotate itself and, and you know, and, and the forces, the gravity forces automatically being added to it. Um, but what we want to do is say, if keyboard, key, klfw, underscore key, underscore, let's say spacebar. Um, so if the spacebar is pressed or mouse button down, let's say um, 
mouse, is it mouse button? Yeah, mouse button one, or mouse button left, right? We have that? Left, yeah. So let's say you can either click or press the space bar, and once we do so, we can go ahead and call some method on the flapper um, that will, let's say, flap, right? So actually, let's do that. So flapper, flap. I won't have to write that method now. Uh, for now, we're just adding arbitrary forces. We don't care about that anymore. Um, so now, all we're going to do, and actually, now that I've narrowed it down, this might actually not look too bad in the main, because <laughs> it's actually quite um, quite a small amount of code. Uh, but I think it's good practice anyways, especially if we're going to grow this in the future, uh, to have this kind of outside of uh, the main. Uh, so we'll do call flapper.flap, and now we'll have to go to our flapper and create this flap method. Um, flap, and then flap will do, will apply a force, and will do some other fun stuff to our flapper. Okay, so what we want to do is, uh, and also we'll have to change stuff in the update, which is fine, but, um, so this force is automatically being added here, uh, because of gravity, uh, so that's fine. We can go back to our flapper. So now we know our, our guy will, our, our flapper or our bird will always uh, be affected by gravity. That's fine. Um, what we want to do here too, though, is to give it a rotation. Um, so that's that's pretty straightforward. So we'll want to rotate. Um, I can't. Uh, let's see. I can't remember if we support rotations on the rigid body side. We don't, which is fine. We'll have to do that eventually for when we do collisions. Uh, so for now, we'll just do um, the rotation on the sprite side. So let's say sprite dot add or uh, rotate by, and let's say we'll rotate by, I don't know, 10 degrees. We'll have to see how that is. And actually, that because it's in the update method, that's actually going to going to be, if, uh, yeah, that's that won't really work because that uh, because of the frame rate frame rate issues might actually make our sprite rotate um, in a way that we don't expect. Uh, so we'll definitely want to be multiplying this by engine get. Do we not have engine in this guy? We don't. I don't need it here really. I should only need it here. Engine engine engines get dt. So now it's not degrees anymore. It's some value um, because we're multiplying it by the delta time. So let's say 100, and we'll see what that looks like. Um, now. For gravity, we're fine. Uh, we don't want to move up to right anymore, which we won't be able to because we've removed that code. All we know is that we're going to flap. And when we flap, um, let's say when we flap, we'll say uh, rigid body add. Um, okay, I read. Uh, oh, whoops. This should be flapping. Um, so rigid body um, add force uh, vector 3. And we'll add a force in the y direction, uh, which we should be able to. Well, it, it, it'll always be constant, so we can use magic number here. Really, we shouldn't, but um, for, just for the sake of, you know, for the purposes of this test, let's add a force upward of 200. Um, <clears throat> let's try that. So now we should be affected by gravity. We should be able to flap our way up, and we should be constantly rotating, which we'll have to fix. But that's fine. Um, so. Oh geez, that force is huge. Oh yeah, that's right. I didn't uh, multiply it. So, oh wait, does add force multiply? It? it does not. But it does in the velocity. Um, it does in the velocity. Okay. So we don't have to multiply by get delta time out here. We just have to give it a smaller force. So let's give it twenty. And let's see. I can click. Oh, I can't click. The click doesn't really work. And the spacebar might not be. <laughs> twenty might not be enough. Let's make it a hundred. See, 100, there we go, 100. Click isn't working for some reason. Uh, let's, try, let's take a look at click real quick. If we spacebar or if mouse button down, button mount, yeah, that looks correct. We did have clicking working before. What did we have before here? What did we have before here? Yeah, that looks the same, right? Mouse button down, JLFW mouse button left. And that totally was working in the past. Um, mouse button down, JLFW mouse button left. Interesting. 
Okay, we'll have to uh, we'll have to take a look at that. Um, I don't want to lose my train of thought here though for the other part, so we'll go we'll come back to that. Um, here even 100 is too much. Let's do really 20. I thought 20 should be. Maybe I waited too much. Yeah, no, 20. 20 is actually being outperformed by gravity. Let's do 50. Oh, okay, so uh, actually, see, so here, here's the thing, right? So the way Flappy Bird works is it doesn't actually use um, velocities like that. Like what we're doing here is we're adding a force. Um, so if our velocity is already actually I have something you can draw here. I thought, yeah, this guy. This is me testing some software I want to use for this kind of stuff. But um, so if we had something like uh, we have a bird, right? So I can't draw, <laughs> uh, and especially with a mouse, it's hard. But uh, so let's say every frame we're adding gravity to this. Uh, so our velocity, so y is zero at the f at first, then it's ten, then it's uh, twenty, then it's thirty, right? And so on. And it's constantly being added by gravity. So it it the wave, let's say the wave for that kind of just looks like this, right? It'll constantly be coming down. Um, what we want to do, so the longer we wait, the less of an effect our adding force will have on that object. Because if this is 30, right? Let's say the current velocity is 30. Let's say it's somewhere up here. Um, and we add a force of 50, then the net force will be 20 upwards, which means it'll move up just a bit upwards and then start falling again, right? Um, what we, if we wait longer, like if we're, if we wait till down here where the force, let's say, is 300 and we add 50, our force is still 250. And our guy will continue, like, it, it'll basically just look like this instead. It'll kind of get a little bump, but it will never actually move upwards. Um, so what we want to do is, despite the actual current velocity, we're going to want to actually, instead of uh, adding a force, we want to actually modify our current velocity. So even if we're falling, it doesn't matter how long we wait or how great that velocity is, we can just set our velocity to like negative 50, right? And this would be a value that we pick, and it would be a negative, and then regardless of how big that value is, we just set it to negative 50, and it will always come back up, and then gravity will affect it again, regardless of when we do it, right? Um, so regardless of where on that wave we are, we are, we are directly modifying the, the value so that it's a constant and then gravity takes over um, so that we're not adding the forces. So I think I think that uh, makes sense. So let's do that. So instead of uh, doing something like add force, we're going to want to have a way of like not necessarily resetting the velocity, but setting it directly. So we have add force, which... Um, yeah, I guess in this case, the way we were going at it before was we wanted to add forces so that we could then multiply by friction and, and affect add gravity and all that. And it had this kind of nice simulation almost of, of some very basic uh, physics. For our purposes, we actually never really want to add forces. Um, all we want to do is let gravity do its thing um, and then like directly set the velocity. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll just create a new method. We'll call it um, set val pass it vector three. Um, I'll call it uh, val. So really, we're doing a setter for this guy, um, and that uh, we'll be able to use that then to get the effect we want. So down here, set val equals so instead of adding a force, we're directly setting the velocity. Um, and because of the, just because of the nature of the game that we're trying to make here, the x velocity will never be anything other than zero. Um, so we don't have to worry about that on that side. Uh, basically, what we want to do here is instead of add force, we'll say set val. And now we'll set the velocity to a zero on the x, zero on the z, and 50 on the y. Um, this. Yeah, sorry, when I was explaining it in Milton earlier on the drawing app, um, I had the, the Y um, sign flipped. Uh, but in this case, negative is down, so we want to give it a positive 50 to, for it to go up. Obviously, in terms of gravity. Um, so this actually should do what we want it to do. So let's give it a try. 
And regardless, yeah, so now 50 is too low, but you can see regardless of how long I wait, let's make it uh, 100. So I can, uh, let's make it 500. Let's see. Now we're setting arbitrary values, which is fine, but there we go. That actually looks pretty good. So as you can see, regardless of how far, how fast it's going when it's falling, I'm directly modifying the velocity at any point in that uh, in that wave. So regardless of where we are and how far we've traveled, um, it will automatically jump back up and give it a positive 50, 50 or 500, sorry, and 500 seems a little low, actually. Let's do 5,000. Let's bump it up by 10, 10 times and see what that looks like. Yeah, I know. 1,000. That's too much, because we have to have space for our um, our two kind of tower things that we have to run into, right? So maybe and this is a value we can totally play with, kind of as we go, especially especially as we create the, the values. And I actually think our plane is a little too big um, for the rotation. As you can see, we're rotating in the wrong direction. What we want is um, oh yeah, this really shouldn't. Let's see, 100. Um, let's make this, so first it should be negative. And because rotate by is actually, oh, there it is. Yeah, sorry, I didn't realize we automatically did this on this side. So good, okay, we don't have to put it on here, which is, I was wondering why it's going so slowly. Um, let's make it negative 10, see what that looks like. It's not fast enough. Let's make it um, 50. That looks a little better. Um, so what, I'm, what we're going to do, so again here, uh, when we do rigid body update, we're adding gravity, right? Um, and when we do rotate by, we're again, we're, this is kind of an addition, right? Because we're rotating by where we're adding something. Um, and again, when we flap, we want to be setting values. So we want to do sprite dot set, uh, rotate to, so it's absolute. And then we'll give it a, a, a value. So I guess we want to, I think the bird starts facing actually directly to the right. So let's give it rotate to zero. Oh, actually, no, but when we flap, we should be looking up. So let's give it a negative or a positive, uh, let's say 45 degrees. Um, and let's actually make sure that when we start this up, we have, um, actually, when we start, yeah, sorry, the rotation actually is directly across. When we start, so now <laughs> that uh, looks a little weird, actually. And we're still rotating from the from this point, the bottom left point. We're not rotating by uh, like the middle, so we shouldn't actually be able, we should be setting that anchor to be the middle, so that when we do our um, this thing, we we should this won't change, but we'll have to draw it get, um, off by half of the width and the height. Um, so that we effectively move the image over and the anchor point, the bottom left anchor point remains in the same position. Um, so actually we should, we should do that now. Um, so what we want to do is, this is, this is basically where the coordinate we're taking from the, from the sprite, and then this is where we're drawing it in our world. Again, we've already translated by a specific position, so um, we don't want to draw anymore from the bottom left up and out, we want to draw from the bottom left, but then further bottom left and then over so that we're in the center. So instead of zero, we'll want to go into a negative. So we'll want to go negative texture dot get width um, divided by two and negative texture dot get height divided by two. Um, So we want to start at negative negative instead of zero zero. Again, we're just shifting it down um, to the left and to the to the bottom by half of the width and height, so that the anchor point becomes the middle of the plane, um, because that that is and again it's we might we have to we actually should shrink that plane down a bit, but really we want the rotation about the center of the of the plane. So now we're not drawing to, all the way across to get width. We're drawing to get width divided by two. And our zero again is negative texture get height um, divided by two, 
And then here, get width one again. We're not drawing the full way. We're going to halfway there. And then from here, we should be able to just take this guy, and that's negative that. And then uh, this guy divided by two. So let's um, just align these here. Um, there we go. That looks good. Uh, okay, let's see if that looks correct for us. So really it should be, yep, that looks totally correct. Um, now as you can tell, our rigid body isn't uh, isn't moving with it because the way we've done this is uh, we're directly modifying where we're drawing it. Uh, so the position and all that stuff um, is still the same. We're just literally telling OpenGL to draw it with an offset. Um, so we should update um, our rigid body um, for its uh, its render um, so that it does the same thing. Um, so let's do let's do that. So we'll do instead of oh yeah these are just the lines which is fine. Translate uh, pause x pause y. So actually what we could do here um, we we might actually be able to just translate it by pause x um, minus the amount there. Um, I guess we that's something we could have done here as well, but well no, because we still want the position to be the same. We didn't want to move the position. We wanted to move the way we draw the sprite. Um, so I think I think we have to do the same here. Again, when we do actual collision, these these are the values we have to use, so they have to be this um, consistent across the sprite and the rigid body. So yeah, we'll do the, we'll do the same thing here. So we'll do. Um, Negative int, I guess, size x divided by 2, and negative int uh, size y divided by 2. And then this guy will be the same thing divided by 2, and negative int size y divided by 2. Um, and then this is the same point, and then our new one, which is again not the full extent, but halfway there. And then take that guy here, and then this will become and then take that spot there and go back to the beginning. There we go. So now we should be able to draw perfect. And now as you can see we're rotating again that the position of the plane itself hasn't changed. We're just drawing it. Um, with an offset, so as you can see, it's still on the left side here. Um, our plane, we actually are going to want to be right in the middle. I think we set the position here, so really this should be the middle of the screen. Um, so I think our screen is what 640 or 800 by 600. I can't uh, can't remember. Um, let's see. Oops. There we go. Okay, so it's that. Um, so we'll want to pull that, which I think we can do. It's just static on the publicly accessible. Perfect. So uh, we'll want to set this guy to engines uh, screen width divided by 2. And again, because the position is now the center of the plane, this will mean that our plane is actually directly in the middle of the, of the, sc of the screen um, and not, it's not like the bottom left part of the plane is in the middle of the screen. We're actually at the middle, the center of the plane, right in the middle. And this, actually, the plane should start um, um, in the middle of the screen on the y-axis as well. So now we should be right in the middle. There we go. And then there we go. And that's exactly this rotation, this falling rotation, is actually probably a little. Oh, you know what? The ro this rotation should actually be relative to the velocity. So when the velocity is at zero, we should be at 90 degrees, and then any velocity higher or lower than that should be reflected in the in the rotation. Um, for now, uh, let's just bump it up here. We're doing 50 again. We're doing magic numbers. We really shouldn't be, but um, let's try this 100. So that falls a little too fast. Um, so I actually should be able to. Get so uh, if I make the velocity on the rigid body publicly accessible, if I do something like um, get val, rigid 
So if I get the velocity, I can in our flapper get that guy. So let's say float uh, y val equals <clears throat> so we'll get the y velocity and if it's so how do we want to do this? Let's see if it's a let's let's pull up Milton again. So uh, let's clear. So uh, let's bring the bush size down a bit. There we go. Um, okay, so we have a velocity. If we have a graph for velocity where this is zero, um, our velocity could look like this, right? And then we have a positive velocity. Let's say this is uh, 50 or whatever we set to. I think it's actually 1,000. Um, and then here, let's say it's negative 1,000, right? So if our velocity is falling, where that means this is this is this in our position, oops, where this point zero is the tip of our parabola, right? So this is our position and this is our velocity, this is the derivative of this. Um, so in this case, what we want to look at is the position needs to be affected, or the rotation needs to be affected by the position. So in this case, we want to be looking towards the parabola. Basically, we always want to be looking towards the next spot in the parabola. That's why the derivative helps us. Um, so in this case, um, when we're at a positive, uh, if we know that for zero, we want that to translate to zero degrees, right? Uh, zero degrees being this guy. Um, then we know that anything positive, uh, we can give it a max and a min of rota uh, rotation. Because really, if we don't ever want it to kind of go below and then backwards, right? So if we give it our min, let's say our min, um, in this case, our min, let's say it's, uh, it'll be arbitrary for now, and then we'll have to play with it, but let's let's give it um, 70 degrees. That's our min. And then our max, let's give it, uh, I guess, the, the same, negative 70, right? So we really, the, our plane can only rotate somewhere between negative 70 and 70 degrees. Um, so, oh, and sorry, these are flipped, aren't they? Uh, oh, no, I don't know how to... <laughs> there we go. Um, so we can only, our plane can only rotate between these two points. So if we give it um, that value that when we flap, we set the velocity, that should map to this. And then um, the, neg the, the negative, uh, the times negative one version of that should map to this. And then anything in between should map to the corresponding values in between. So we've got a ratio, right? Um, so if we go back, we have our y velocity, and when we flap, when we flap, we say, okay, so let's make this a little cleaner here. So let's go um, max rotate, uh, max rot, let's call it, and min rot, um, and then we'll say uh, flap force, yeah, like that. Um, so up here, We'll set, um, oh, where this should do, make sure we call this guy when we instantiate it this way. So that way we can only, we can instantiate the stuff here. Um, so we have flap force, uh, which we currently set to 750. It's great. And then we're saying rotate, uh, we're rotating up 45 degrees, which I can't remember if we like that or not. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, 45 is good. That's good. Um, so we'll say max rot is, and the max will say the upper bound um, is 45, and min rot is negative max rot. So if we change this, this will update automatically. Okay, so we've got the values. Let's fill them in here. So this is flat force. This is max rot. Um, and I guess we never, we only want to rotate um, up to min rot. Um, because of the nature of the way we've written this, we'll never actually go exceed, we'll never exceed max rot because we only ever um, set it back up to that value and then we always decrease the rotation, right? Um, so we've got the velocity. We know the velocity will range from a value of, well, it, um, 
I guess in this case, like if your if your velocity is too great, like you're gonna have lost anyways because you're gonna have gone off the bottom of the screen. So this kind of does work out for us. So we have flat force is our top part. So um, our ratio looks like this. Um, so uh, what we want to do is figure out what we need to multiply 750 by to get 45. Uh, so 45 divided by 750 gives us 0 0.06. Um, there we go. Sorry, um, haven't done this in a while. But uh, so if so, this will effectively give us that um, that ratio that we want. So if we say take whatever velocity, take the value of our velocity, whatever that may be, multiply by 0 0.06, and then we'll get our rotation, whatever that we want that to be. So let's try that for a couple values, right? So 750. So if I Again, take, let's move this over here. <clears throat> so if it's 50 multiplied by 0 0.06, you get 45. So that means that if our velocity becomes 500, our rotation should be 30. Eventually, if our velocity becomes, like, let's say, 10, obviously that becomes 0 0.6, which will be our rotation. And eventually, if our velocity is 0, that will become 0. And then what we can do is... Um, when it comes when it comes negatives, because again we can go all the way down at like negative 750 and beyond actually. Um, once we do that again, we can do the same thing, right? Because if we had negative 10, oops, negative 10, right? Uh, negative 10. There we go. Um, times 0 0.06, we still get the same value, but on the negative side. So yeah, yeah. So <laughs> all of this didn't need to be that complex. All we want to know is find out the ratio, and the ratio here is 0 0.06. Um, so, if we go back to our code, we say our y val, we have our y velocity, um, and we'll have, um, and then we'll say float. Um, uh, I guess in this case, we're not rotating by, right? We're rotating directly based on that value. So let's say new rot, new rotation will be y val times 0 0.06. Now again, <laughs> well, I can't actually do this, right? Because this will only, if we change y val, this this makes, messes up our math. Um, so really, what I have to do is again do the 45 divided by 750, right, to give me that that factor that I need to multiply by, and that's this part, right? That's the um, um, I guess this doesn't this isn't actually right, right? It becomes flat force divided by max rot equals x. X being our factor that we then multiply back into our new, our actual rot to get our, our new rotation, right? So um, this should actually become max rot divided by um, flat force. And here we're hoping that flat force isn't zero, right? So if flat force equals zero, we have something really bad happening. Um, Actually, we can see out here. Yeah. Um, let's default it here. So that way we make sure that it's actually been set, so we don't try to divide it by zero and crash. Um, and now we have a new rod, so we want to rotate directly, right? So rotate to um, new rod. And now our rotation should be totally relative to our y velocity, and that should give us the correct rotation. Um, let's give that a shot. <laughs> so I think what's happening is we're using integer math. So for the very first frame, it's a 1, which gives us the 45. And then for every frame after that, it gets truncated. Um, and sure enough, yeah, oh, no, these are floats. Oh, but rotate to, yeah, it takes a float, actually. Um, OK, interesting. So let's just print this guy out. Let's print out uh, y val. New rot. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, it actually does look correct. Um, oh, wait a minute. New rods always um, zero plus zero. So yeah, yeah. Sorry. This is this is our yeah. See, this is our our ratio. This is our factor. So we want to take that factor and multiply it by our actual y value. There we go. That makes more sense. Sorry. 
So, uh, there we go. Look at that. That's beautiful. And then I guess, yeah, again. I, I don't really mind that if we go, high, like, at this point you've already died because you're outside of the screen. Um, and I don't really mind that the rotation keeps going, like, in the negatives like this. Um, that doesn't really bother me too much. Um, so I think we're good on that front. Um, so again, just to recap real quick, so we find out the ratio. So this way, like, for example, if I decide to change this to 400, and let's say I only want to rotate 10 degrees, within 10 degrees, so as you can see, we only really have those 10 degrees, and because our force is so small, it's actually a little proportional, but if we move it, let's move this back to 750, um, you can see that regardless of how much force you're adding, you're still only going to that max 10 degrees, and then we're basically, at this point, what it looks like is, is it looks like we're at, um, it looks like we're at this point in the parab, oh, I, I guess I deleted the other one. Um, again, if we look at positioning here, so we'll look at, um, this is our velocity, and this is our position, right? Um, and this, well, actually, I guess we can do this. <laughs> this here is zero. Um, so if we're setting it to 10 degrees, then really the only time um, that we can actually, um, we, that you actually see us being set is at a tangent to this line that is 10 degrees um, away from the direction of that line, of that tangent, right? So th then, like, really, this is the only amount of space we're giving ourselves. So we're basically, by giving us um, 10 degrees, we're putting ourselves at this spot, oh god, at this spot in the parabola. So we've only got 10 more degrees to go up, and then eventually we're pointing down. And again, because of the way that we did the math, we're always pointing to the, to the kind of in that tangent uh, at every step for this parabola, right? We're always pointing forward um, like this. So if I basically said that we allowed a, a more um, degrees, let's say a higher range of degrees, let's say 90 degrees, then I would put us here where at the beginning it's it's almost 90 or whatever, right? And eventually you start falling down. Um, so I'll show you what that looks like. So if we bump this guy up to 90 degrees, then we're right at the beginning of that parabola. And you can see in that case, because we start, because the force is so small in comparison, the spinning is a lot faster. Again, assume like that we're we're facing directly to the right as soon as we're starting to come down, as soon as we're at the tip of that parabola. Um, so you have to find basically a value that looks really nice, and I think in that case it's the 45 degrees for us, right? Um, so it would be somewhere here where we have about 45 degrees, um, and then we get that nice kind of parabola again, always looking at the next spot given that tangent at that particular moment in time, right? So if we bring this back to 45, I think that looked the best. Um, yeah, I like that. We could, uh, it might, we could even go 35, maybe 30, um, and put ourselves further down that wave. Um, yeah, actually, 30, 30 actually looks really good. I really like 30. Um, but again, like you guys can play around with whatever values you want to set. The, the point is that the math works so that all we have to do is muck around with these values and then we get a different uh, a different kind of spot in the wave and you know um, everything that I've already explained. So I think this is where I'll leave it for today. Um, to recap we've got a proper flappy bird kind of um, behavior here where every time we flap um, we are resetting so we're setting our, our velocity so we can't we go up directly uh, regardless of what our velocity is actually set to and then we reset our, our rotation and uh, this is the way the actual Flappy Bird game works is you, you're you directly setting that new rotation um, the bird, uh, again the plane is a little big but we can bring that down and also obviously the rigid body's um, size will have to change because that's that would be a, a really horrible uh, bounding kind of box for for this because there's so much white space on the outside um, we'll probably change images in fact this guy's really long and it makes it really difficult. Um, but yeah, I think this is this is basically all I wanted to get done today was just make it 
getting the Flappy Bird behavior actually working. Um, once once we move forward, like we can get collisions and we can get game state and all that, and we can wrap this thing up. Um, but I think for now that this is uh, pretty happy with, uh, with the way it works. So uh, that is where I'll leave it today, guys, and I'll see you next time.